We're going to look at blocks, which are a very important concept in programming. In Java, blocks start with a curly brace and end with a curly brace. And if you're using most IDEs, including NetBeans here, when you put the cursor next to one curly brace, it highlights the other one in yellow. Also, you'll notice that it indents four spaces whenever you go in another block. And notice your class is also itself a block because it starts with a curly brace and the matching curly brace is down here at the bottom line 22. So we have one big block, that's the class. We have another block, that's the main. Whatever variable you declare inside of a block, for example, value only exists inside the block you declare it. Now you might be wondering, well, we have value down here too. We do, but if you notice when I highlight value down here on line 14, it also highlights these values, but it no longer highlights the value up here on line 10. So I could change this, just give a different name, I'll just call it J. And when you call a method, when you use a primitive, which is any number or string, it sends a copy of that to the method. So for example, I set j to four, so it's gonna send the value of four down to method right here. Probably shouldn't call your method method, but that's okay here. So in this method, that's a new block right here because it starts with a curly brace, ends with a curly brace. Uh, met any block in Java has to start with uh, a method or, and this is a method here, or a class. We have another block here and it starts with a for loop. Now this for loop, we declare variable i and say when it's less than value, we're gonna keep going and then increment i by one each time. And we start a block here. All we're gonna do is just print out i and value. And you can already see the output. I ran it right here. It's not terribly exciting output, but I'm gonna just demonstrate how blocks work. So what I want to do, when this loop is done, I want to print out i after the loop finishes. So in NetBeans, I can sout tab i equals i. But we have a problem here. i was declared here. Technically, it's not in between these curly braces, but the way blocks work in Java and most languages, when you start a block, for example, this block started with a for statement or for loop. You declare a variable right here and it, this i variable will stop existing when we leave the block. So i is no longer in scope. If I want to get the value i, whatever the value of i is at the end, I know it should be three it looks like, uh, sort of, or is it four? That's a good question. It depends on if it does the, ch uh, I think it does an increment before the check. So I believe it'll be four, but we're going to find out really soon. So what I want to do is take this declaration of I and I'm going to move it up here. So I'm declaring I up here because that's outside of the block. I will continue to exist until I leave the block it was declared in. So here's the block it was declared in, starts line 14, ends line 20. So I exist all the way from line 15 to 19 in this code. So now I can print out the value of i. I'm gonna run this. And you see at the very end, i actually equals four. It did incre increment i, then found out that four is not less than four. So it stopped the loop, but printed out four. So hopefully that'll help you with blocks a little bit. I'm gonna go and diagram this visually. Hopefully. There we go. So visually what's happening, let's get a nice color. Here is the outermost block, and you can always nest blocks, meaning you can have a block inside of a block. So here's the main method block. Here's the other method block, and here is the for loop block. 
So that's the way the blocks are nested. And this is a good way to think about it. We're about to go back into NetBeans and NetBeans sort of does this. It doesn't do it with such a pretty color. But if you look very carefully, hopefully it shows up on this video, you see a vertical, a gray vertical line right here. It's basically right under the P for public. There's another short gray line that only goes down two lines here, vertical line. There's another short gray line that goes down here and a really tiny short gray line that goes uh, under the F for four. And you can think of those gray lines as basically, let's see, let me undo a few of these. The gray line basically goes down like that. The next gray line is right here. The next gray line is here and there. So it serves a very similar purpose to what I drew, except it's a little less obvious and it doesn't have the nice feature where it kind of wraps up and encompasses the curly brace. So this is probably a better way to think about blocks right here. So I hope that helps you understand blocks a little bit better.